Namaskar. Hello, everyone. Thank you for all the responses we have got in just uh, after we announced this uh, Gen AI masterclass. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, questions, concerns, and a lot of uh, thoughts which really needs some level of thinking, pondering over, and deciding whether this uh, Gen AI masterclass is relevant for you or not. And when I say you, I'm talking specifically about a few roles in the industry. Roles, those who are involved in either sales, sales enablement, sales support, and e-sales. And of course, includes bid and proposal management roles. I'm going to talk specifically on these roles because this Gen AI masterclass has been designed specifically for these roles. Now coming to your question, which is the first question is that, how is this course going to help me? And when I read that question, help me, I interpret it in two terms. One is, how is it going to help me to perform better in my role? Or maybe even basic question, sustain in my role, prove myself relevant for my role. And second question, part of the question is, how is it going to help me to strive in my role or to grow in my role? Now to answer that question, and both the parts of the question needs a deep level of thinking and understanding. Let us try to understand what is the context in which we are asking this question. The primary context in which we are asking or we are discussing this is the impact of the generative AI, this particular technology, generative AI or Gen AI, which we are talking about in last two years in the industry. I don't think any board meeting, any meeting of the executive management or any meeting of the business leaders and even meetings at the cafeterias and the water coolers do not have a mention of this particular technology Gen AI. And this is particularly for two reasons. One is the way this technology has democratized or made available the features of a system to everyone. Before this, if you go back a couple of years or decade, or not even a decade, maybe a couple of years back, for any specific function to, to perform a specific function, you needed an application. And that application was very specific to that particular domain or for that particular functionality. Secondly, you needed to know how to use that application. However simple, user-friendly, best user experience application it may be, you still needed to know what to do. 
with it. And obviously, the output of it was also very defined that, okay, if this is the application for maintaining the customer relationship records, then it will do that. Maybe some additional functionality, additional features, maybe some additional plugins added to it, some bolt-on applications to it, but it was specific to a domain. All of a sudden, we have this technology which can address many trivial and complex things, complex functions in any domain. So till now we were hearing, we like that, we have that common adage, jack of all, master of none. Well, I can't say Jenny is a master of all, but I think it's definitely a jack of all and a better jack of all, a smarter jack of all. So in a way, it is addressing across the business domains and not just business domains. Look at the creative domains. It is impacting there. Look at the technology domain. It is doing, it is impacting there. Of course, the knowledge domain or the business domain, it is impacting there. It is it is performing there. It, is, it has got its, it has found a purpose there also. So it has become so purposeful across the domains. That is what is one big difference between the technologies which we had before this and this particular technology. The second aspect of it is anybody who knows how to communicate or how to ask the right question can interact with this system. You don't need any programming language. You don't need any syntax knowledge of any algorithm. You don't need any knowledge of any data structure any architecture or anything, even you don't need to know how to operate a application. You simply need to type in something. Type the question which you want. And it gives you the results. And there are many other such factors, many other such factors, which has made this technology a sort of a revolutionary revolution. Maybe if you if we remember the last such revolution came was when we had the iPhone, when Apple launched the iPhone. Instead of a stylus or instead of typing, you could do everything with your finger. That was a radical change. Before that, maybe the internet. When you made, when we got access to all the information around the world within a browser. So in that way, in that sense, it is a revolutionary technology which is going to, which, which has made impact. And like, like internet made an impact on everything. Like when internet first started, we thought that it was only for websites, just for sharing information. Today, look at internet. What is not possible on internet? Most of the things we should do has it, internet becomes the foundation layer for that. It's the same with this particular technology, which is going to happen and which is happening. So definitely this technology has an impact on every business too. And when it has an impact on every business domain, obviously the underlying and the associated roles, jobs, processes, everything will have, have its own impact. So let us now come specifically to what is the impact 
it has on the role, specifically the bid management, sales and sales or pre-sales or sales and everything. Now, if you see these all roles, these roles are specifically the core around which these roles operate is knowledge. Knowledge of a product, knowledge of a, uh, of a customer, knowledge of the market, knowledge of the uh, of uh, of a client, knowledge about your capabilities. The core around which all these roles operate is knowledge. And all of a sudden, you have a platform or a, a technology which has been trained on the existing knowledge of the entire internet and more than that also in some cases or in most of the cases and which can be again extended or fine-tuned to the knowledge specific to your organization or your domain or your business. So all of a sudden you have all this knowledge, your knowledge plus the global knowledge available and a smart assistant who can provide you the knowledge just by understanding what you want. And that too also in your own language, in a human language, in a human natural human language. And gives you also the content back in the natural human language, even formatted it as per your requirement. So definitely it is going to be making an impact in what we do. Now, what is that impact going to be and how that impact is going to, how should we look at that impact? That's the question. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into much details about the technology side of it, but I'm trying to just try to build that thought in your mind that how, what can be the positive side of Chenea and what would be the what can be the basically the negative impact of Chenea in specifically in our roles. A role as a bid manager, proposal manager, sales enablement, head, solution architect, whatever role. And how does this particular course, because your questions are all about this course, but yeah, this question, the first question which I'm addressing is more of a generic question is it, uh, it, whether you are part of this course or whether you are not a part of this course, this question will be there in your mind. So I'm trying to address that question. And this question, uh, the answers I'm trying to provide is basically based on my observation, my experience and exposure to this technology over the years. Fortunately, I was fortunate enough to be involved in this technology or even the predecessor of this technology when I was working with Xerox uh, as a product evangelist and uh, Xerox was building a product, AI-based product, specifically not only due to, uh, related to bid and proposal management, but as I said, around knowledge management. And of course, proposals are one of the biggest uh, knowledge assets of any organization. And so I was involved with this team of uh, experts in AI, had made very good friends, learned a lot from them. And that's particularly the, a, a, uh, the that background. And from there, my quest about this technology continued. And over the period and every day, I am learning something related to this technology. I am attending every possible conference or uh, webinar available, uh, where accessible and web available. I'm trying to learn and I'm trying to see where it is going. And if you are following my articles on LinkedIn, you will also see that I'm writing and sharing also what I am, what I am experiencing. So whatever I'm trying to bring to you or, or share with you is totally based on my experience. And I'm talking to, the biggest part is that I'm talking to everyone. I'm talking to the Gen AI architects. I have access to, or basically I, in my network, I have what some of the best 
of the architects who are, are working on the most uh, latest or the, the, the cutting edge, what we call as the cutting edge of the technology side. I'm talking to the business leaders. I'm talking to the sales heads. I'm talking even to the procurement heads. Everyone who is involved in engineer and trust me, everybody has the same question is that or the same thought is that that if we miss this band, if we miss the cycle of leveraging Genii for our purpose, for our business, possibly we will not exist. It sounds scary, but it's true. Ask any leader. Everyone is today thinking like, how can I leverage Genii? And primarily, they have a reason to think. Because the primary goal or the primary objective, focus, goal of any CXO level or any leader is first improve productivity, efficiency, reduce cost, increase revenue, increase profitability. And Gen AI is actually helping them in doing all this. Now it is on them how they want to leverage Gen AI. So obviously everybody is trying to find out how can I leverage Gen AI to improve my productivity, my productivity, it's my organization's productivity, reduce my costs, increase my customer experience, the experience I deliver to my customer, the speed at which I address to the customer. How can I use this technology for this call? So obviously, Gen AI is in the mind of every leader. Ask any leader about the last summit they attended, whether Gen AI was talked on. Everybody will say that 70% of the discussion, 80% of the discussion, and some of them, 90 or 100% of the discussion was totally around it. Gen AI had somehow, well, the other has taken the center stick. So if it is so, then how can we sit back and say that, no, I don't know whether it is going to be, it is going to be helpful for me or not. It is going to be helpful for you or not is there a question out of the question. The question is, is it going to impact you? Is it going to impact us in this particular role in doing what the way we are doing things? Yes. The question is when? And the speed at which Gen AI is moving. Gen AI applications are coming into the market. People are adopting Gen AI. With that, it does not look too far. <coughs> so the question here is, if this technology, if this technology is going to impact me in my role, how does knowing this technology going to help? How does knowing about this technology or any a building any acumen or skill, knowledge or skill in acumen going to help me? That is the question which you should. The question is not that how the what this course is covering. Of course, that is a part of it. So we need to know. But the question, most important question is how is this Knowing this technology, understanding its capabilities, understand its limitations, understanding its features, purposes it can solve, domains in which it is being used, how can that help me to sustain 
and to thrive or grow in my way. Well, as bid and proposal managers or sales management professionals or everyone, we know that the biggest challenge we have today is speed, which is deadlines and limitation of resources to do the things. We are not limited on information. We are not limited on knowledge. Everything is available. But what is the right knowledge? What is the right, what is the speed in which that knowledge can be contextualized for a specific purpose, for a specific RFP or for a specific proposal? That is the challenge. As I said, knowledge is available. But how can I contextualize it and make it more compelling for my evaluator or for my reader to read it and get the insights which he needs to make a decision? How do I make the content which I already have insightful? for my decision evaluators, for my decision, for the decision makers who are going to take a decision whether to buy from me or not, whether my uh, value makes a sense for them or whether, whether my value stands differentiated from others or not, how do I help them in doing that? Third point is, the solutions which we build today Even they, though, though they address a specific business function, a business problem, but they are enabled by a core technology. That technology is either pre-built, if you are using a apps or an application, enterprise application, or it is custom -built. And when you, whether you are building it or whether you are customized, still there is a level of configuration or customization which needs to be done specifically for the purpose of that specific client. And these technologies are changing so fast that most of the times we do not have any understanding of the technology, underlying technologies of the solutions which we are building or even the approaches what, why we are taking, what we are taking. And we are totally dependent on the experts to do that. Whether the expert is a solution architect, whether the expert is a subject matter expert, and even the business domain knowledge. We are totally dependent on these experts. And these experts are not always available. These experts may have the knowledge but may not have the client context. What if we can solve that problem? Can you, and, and typically that's a problem because if you ask the entire community of bid and proposal management professionals out of the top five problems, if they have to, uh, if they have to list out, one of the problems is maybe coordinating with the subject matter experts or getting the inputs from the subject matter experts and the inputs which I get from the subject matter experts, contextualizing it for the customer. That's a big problem. A real problem which we face in the industry, across the industry. And the th most important problem is that when we do not know the core product or the core enabling enabling technology of the product which we are selling, we cannot be convinced. We cannot be convincing to the customer. The customer when he reads, the evaluator when he reads, knows that, okay, this is a standard information provided to me, which I could have found in a brochure or in the website. 
it is not specific to my need or it has not been contextualized to mine. That's another big problem which we have. And this is no one to blame for this because the technology is changing so fast. The architectures. I remember in my entire career span, I have seen how many uh, how many different levels of architectures. Right from the monolithic architecture of the main phase, of course, I started 30 years back. So when I was on the monolithic architectures to the client server, uh, sorry, the network architecture to the client server architecture and to the web architecture, then the so uh, the middleware architecture, the SOA architecture, then the SOA architecture, then the microservices architecture, and I now we have the agent architecture, agent network architecture. Now, of course, when I have to sell a solution, when I have to write about a solution, I need to talk about what that solution, what is the core architecture of that solution. And if I don't know the core architecture of the solution, definitely I'm not going to be able to convince the customer, whether in the proposal or in the presentation, in the orals. That does not mean that I need to be a technology guy, that I need to know the coding. I need to know how to configure that, but I need to have an understanding of how it works. This is another bigger problem where I think, where I feel, or not I feel, rather I have seen Gen AI can help. So what are we, and when we, when we, when we think of these problems, and being passionate about this role, being involved in this role for last decades of two decades, more than two decades, and I have been there, I have done that. I have gone through the same thing. Is there a way that where we can leverage this technology to solve these problems which we discussed? I think, yes, we can. And this is an opportunity. But this is not going to come just by using or having an access to the technology. This needs a rigor. And a rigor doesn't mean, and this time, the good thing is that this time the rigor is not technology. Of course, technology is there. A fair underst a understanding of the technology at a high level, which I think a business user definitely can build. But you don't need to know the syntax and the semantics or the form. Uh, the type form or the the type of the programming language or the architecture of the uh, system or the algorithm or the data structure. No, we are not going into that. We are not getting into that. But understanding of the capabilities of that technology, that what can be done with the question and answer capability of a LLM. What can be done with the summarization capability of the LLM? What can be done with the image generation capability of the Genium platform? Let's take an example. Summarization. Imagine the amount of time we spend in summarizing an RFP. Because when you send a RFP to anyone, nobody is going to read it. You have to send a summary of the RFP, whether it is for your qualifying the opportunity, the bid, or whether uh, for to write uh, the section or the proposal. Now, the same summarization capability of the LLM can be used to create your RFP summary. 
the same summarization capability can be used to reduce the content or pages of content sent by the SME to that 250 words limit without losing the gist of it. The same summarization capability can be used to create specifically the to extract the highlights of the of the assessment criteria or the eligibility criteria and give it to the reviewer. So we have to understand the capability. The capability is summarized. And we have to understand the context in which the capability can be used, leveraged. And that's where exactly understanding of the capabilities is important. And every LLM has got its own set of one is a generic set of capabilities, whether it's a text generation capability, whether it is a no, text generation capability, you can think about it, writing sections of the proposal, writing executive summary, text analysis capabilities, finding out the compliance metrics or finding, creating the compliance metric, finding out all the statements which has got the word must or shall or have. So your imagination, you are left to only your imagination, what you can do and what you cannot do with this capability. But you need to understand what are the capabilities of this platform. So that's the first thing. Now, once you understand the capabilities, then the question is, how do I get it done? Well, you say that I can create a RFP summary by the text summarization capability of a LLM. But how do I get it done? Now, that's where you communicate or you give your instructions to the LLM to perform that task. And those instructions, the way you give that instructions actually matter because the LLM interprets your instruction in its own way. Remember, the LLM is a mathematical model. And huge amount of trained data. It does not understand English. It does not have any reasoning capability. It does not understand any language. It does not have any programming construct. Of it. it is only two things. One, a neural network model, a deep learning or a neural network model. And second, a huge amount of data scraped from the internet and from all other available sources. And these are the only two things which are there. And this neural network is a model which takes a human input in a human language input. Does its internal things which it has to do. Yes, we may call it the tokenization and then you may call the the encoding and the decoding that's the transformer and then gives you the output which is again a human like cut now that's a black box but the instruction which you give has to be the has to be something which can be interpreted in the way you want it, the system to interpret. And that's exactly what we call, the, this instruction which we give to the system is called prompt. And that's why it is called prompt engineering. It is not called prompt writing. Because you engineer the prompt, you use the words, again, human language, natural human language. But, you write it in a way that the LLM interprets it the way you want it to them to and gives you the content which you expect. Now, does it do it accurately every time? Not mm -hmm. so. It is totally dependent on how the LLM has been trained. Because remember, this is a probabilistic model. 
it is only predicting the next word or but it is predicting the next word not only by reading the word before it but by reading the whole sentence or the whole paragraph and in in some cases maybe the whole talk so that's with the internal working of it but to get the right internal work get the machine work the system work the rnn or oh, no, sorry the model work the neural network model work right or the llm work and give you the right content you need to write it the engineering the you need to write the instructions in a right way and that's exactly what is prompt engineering and of course you there are other ways of uh and of course prompt engineering is a iterative thing and you can set the weights you can you can configure imagine it to be something like like musicians in an orchestra. Now each musician, a guitar player, a sitar player, a tabla player, whatever musician is there, they, what do they do? When they are playing in this orchestra, or even if they are playing as a solo, they have to first tune. They tune it. They will do, they will do that guitar or they will tune. The sound engineer, he will be looking at the sounds coming through the different channels and then he will be moving those knobs on his the digital thing he has and creating those effects. And when the DJ in the discos, you will see, he will be setting those, moving those channels up and down, turning those knobs. That is basically his tuning. His tuning as per the crowd. What type of music the crowd wants? What is the, do they want the bass? Do they want the treble? Do whatever, whatever, whatever effects he wants to create. He wants he creates those effects. Now that's exactly what the tuning can be done on the elements. That's something which you can do. The, those are no, those weights, and those you can do those tunings also. We have different type tuning like temperature and factors, k factors, and all fa those those can be done. So that's all a part of the prompt engineering. But is it, does it mean that if I have to get the task done, I will write a prompt? And it's the only time when I uh, I create a prompt and that's the, the job is done. And next time when I have to do that job, what do I do? Again, I have to write the prompt. No. You can, there are ways. You can either create a template of the prompt and use that template. And or even you can create your own GPTs, which are basically nothing but your assistants for doing a specific task. And every time you want to execute that task, simply run that GPT. You don't need to write the prompt. And you can share the GPT. So if anybody, one person writes the prompt, uh, GPT creates the GPT, it can be shared across the team and everybody can do the same thing. At least the same instructions can give the exactly, exactly the same instructions to the so there is a level of automation which you can do. So the third thing what we are going to see is that, and if you if you see the entire life cycle or basically the set of tasks we need to do from the point you receive a opportunity or even before the opportunity, if you are involved in the capture management side, of course that also part can be done. A lot of part. A lot of activities which you do during capture management, even they can be automated. But assuming that your role starts from the moment you receive an opportunity, either as an RFP or as a request from the customer or the sales or who's their internal customer, from that moment, what all tasks can be done? And Believe me, I think 90% of the tasks which we do manually to some extent and to many to a large extent can be automated by the GPT or the Gen AI platform. And I can demonstrate to you. And I will demonstrate to you. In this training program, I'm going to demonstrate to you and I'm going to share those with you. And I'll make you do that so that when you go back, 
you don't have to do that drudgery again and again. Obviously, if your organization allows you to uh, use the LLM, but even if you are not using the LLM within your organization, maybe outside or maybe using a free LLM, you can get a lot of things. Lot, I can see. And you can you will see the change in. And definitely, obviously, how do you now today? If you if you, if I look at the IT industry specifically, in the last six months, most of the RFPs, at least from the mature organization, will not about the commoditized service. Even in the commoditized services, yeah, there's always a question: is that how are you leveraging AI and Gen AI technologies? And there's also a discussion point. And what benefits of Gen AI and AI are you going to deliver? Now, this is in all, across all RFPs, you will get, you will be getting this, this type of questions. But what about the questions which are specifically about Gen AI? Fortunately, Till now, we are not having that many number of RFPs coming out for Gen AI, totally Gen AI based solutions. But that day is not far. And again, the approach for Gen AI based solutions, the value proposition of Gen AI based solutions, the differentiation of Gen AI based solutions is not going to be the same. Because they are addressing a different category of problems. It is not a transactional problem they are solving. It may be automation. They are solving more of a creative problem. And at the same time, the underlying technology, the approach and the methodologies and most importantly, the risks related to Gen AI solutions are going to be totally different. Are different. How do you address them? the standard risk management approach won't work? The standard project management approach will not work. It may look like it's going to be agile and iterative an incremental approach. But within that, the steps are different. The steps of building, here you do not have, okay, your requirements gathering phase or something like that. Here you may have a discovery phase. Yes, of course, you will have a discovery phase. And more than that, you will have after the discovery phase, the biggest phase, and the discovery phase may not be only with the business user. It will be with the IT. You may be building a business uh, solution, but the business solution is based on the data or the content which the organization has, which is going to be there with the IT. So you have to have a discovery session with the IT. To see what data assets you have what format they have, what, what level of data prep you need to do. Because that is the core thing over which the LLM solution is going to be built. So point is, your approach of writing Gen AI solutions is also going to be different. And that's exactly what we are also going to address. That how do we approach <coughs> Gen AI based solution, whether it is the solution capability, whether it is the methodology and the approach, and most importantly, the risk. How do we do that? That's all. So that's basically what we are going to cover in the program. And as I said, this is not a generic AI, gender AI training. If you need to know about gender AI, gen AI, learn about prompt engineering, there are hundreds of courses available free on the internet, on the YouTube. But the question here is not about, or the point here is not about, the case point here is not about the technology. The case point is the 
use of the technology for this particular function or this particular role or this particular purpose. And that's why this is you. Specifically for this, for enabling a sales bid manager, proposal manager, proposal writer, pre-sales architect to utilize, to leverage technology, the Genei technology for not only his role, function, but also for creating proposals for his clients. That's it. So that's what I said, like it focuses specifically on the needs on this solves, it rather teaches you the skills. Of course, we know this. It's coming. If we say that, oh no, we don't know. It's like we are just trying to be an ostrich. Just digging a hole in the desert and seeing that, okay, it's not, we can just bury our heads into it. No, it's not going to happen. It's coming. It's, it's there. It's not even coming. It's there. And the best, what I Want to leverage here is that it's going to be hands. You will do everything. Whatever you learn, you will do. Uh, just only for the initial first part of it, where it is about the technology and the uh, other things related to it. But there also, I will demonstrate to you what exactly it is and how it actually happens. Show you whatever to the extent we can we can show it. Like right? of course you cannot get into the internals of the system to work in, but there is a way we, we can experience that. Okay, this is how it is. Like remember, I I those who are from the programming background, uh, remember there used to be a tool when you used to at least when we I used to program in C or C plus plus there used to be a debugger, and that was a very most the programmers that was one of the favorite tools of the programmers which you write, run the entire program and show you the breakpoints and the outcomes of the breakpoints. There are certain methods by which we can see that how it's happening. Of course, you cannot see how the vectors are getting created or the tokens are getting created or how the neural network is working. But yeah, you can you can experience it to some extent. So whatever you learn, you'll be confident about it. That's the guarantee. It's not that, oh, I know about Gen AI, but they are that said I attended a YouTube. It's like learning to swim by watching a YouTube video. No, here you are going to be pushed into the pool. You'll drown to some extent, drink the water, come out, gulp, yeah, dive. That's why it's going to be deep dive. Because at the end of it, you should be confident that you know what Gen AI is. You know how to use Gen AI for your purpose. And you know how to write a proposal, how to sell a Gen AI description. That is the goal of this program. That's the goal of this program. And that's exactly what we want to do. So if you see, these are the four modules which we have here. Okay. And this is... So it starts with the Gen AI foundations. We cover the found prompt engineering and of course the how to write the proposals, how to manage the proposals using Gen AI, and then of course writing the proposals based on Gen. AI. Okay. Now, of course, how does it make a change? That's the question which is actually you should have always before you do anything. You should have this question, even if you learn want to learn gen about Gen AI watching a YouTube video, that's also, then also you should ask this question. How is it going to make a change in me? And what impact of that change is going to? Is it that I will be able to say, yeah, I know, I watched a YouTube video on Gen AI. I, I watched Andre Kaparski and I also watched the Sam Altman. But would you be able to say which foundation model suits for which purpose or which pur which function or feature of a foundation model is needed for which type of job 
or type of use case. Can you think about, innovate about it and say that, no, why can't we use the text classification capability of the LLM to identify the risks in the RFP or the proposal? Why can't I use the text uh, content generation part, text generation capability to write a more persuasive headline for action caption? That is the innovation. Innovation is not invented. Innovation is not discovered. Innovation is about using a existing system to create a new band. And that's what exactly you are going to become. You will use an existing feature. You are not going to write, create the next generation of LLM. But you are going to use the feature or capability of LLM to create a new business brand. That's what is when I say you become an innovator. Of course, when you know more about your client, when you can build a, when you research, when you do a, a research, there's a beautiful AI tool called perplexity.ai. You might have used it. Many of you must be using it. But do you know that you can use it for deep research about the market, about the industry, about the impact of a business problem? about the KPIs which can be used to measure the impact of the problem or the outcome of the problem, solution. Use, you can use perplexity for that purpose. There's a beautiful tool or platform called pi.ai, which can be used for so many purposes. Like I can't just imagine also a hot house, I can't use it for. Like brainstorming. You want to have three personas and you want to identify, uh, you want to uh, uh, You want to have the thoughts of a CIO, you want to have the thoughts of a CTO, and you want to have the thoughts of a CEO on, on a particular problem. You can brainstorm with Pi. You can make Pi think like a CIO or a CTO or a CEO, and you can throw your idea, and then they will give their perspectives. So that is what is innovation. When you are using the technology for something which has not been used for and generating a new value. That is exactly what is going to make you different from the others. The checkbox check. Compliance metrics created, proposal outline created, content filled, review cycle done, submit. That's not going to You have to raise yourself. Strategy. Think. And that's where Jenny I going to do. And when you do that, definitely it is going to expand your opportunities. And not only your opportunities within this site, within this role. Every other role. There are different other roles where you can look for. By using your capabilities, what you have learned. Yeah. You may not become a data scientist. But you can move into a business analyst. Role. You can move into a solution architect. Pre-sales solution architect. You can move into a sales. Role. You can move into a market research. Role. Because you are innovating and you have a story for you. So that is what is the power. It is only how you use it. And that's exactly what we are going to focus. We are not going to look into the creating a content. Of course, we will do that, but that's not where we want to be. We want to see that how you leverage this, this capability of this platform. And of course, be aware of the risks also. Not only the capability, be aware of the risks also. And take the step. Because or else we all know where it is heading. 
so that's all and i think i have addressed all your questions yes the course oh, is a weekend course just for no seven days this is uh, a weekend course saturday and sunday five weekends hopefully it should end in five weekends uh 11 am to 1 pm uh you get a certification of accomplishment from in glory uh, it's an online course, uh, online on Zoom. Uh, the beauty thing is that every recording of the course will be available to you in uh, a virtual classroom. So you can always go back and refer. And if you happen to miss one of the sessions or any part of the session, you can always go back and refer to it. And every material, what we, uh, what we use in the classroom, what we use in the sessions, what we... Uh, use in the demonstration it will be available in the virtual classroom for for you forever that's one thing uh one of the things uh, which is a uh, very unique about uh the training programs which you do in uh in glory is that for us learn we always believe and i always believe that learning is a continual process i can't say that you have learned everything about jenny i right here there will be new things and there are new things coming in and there will be, it will keep coming. So we will be keep updating, we will keep updating our programs. And whenever we update our program and when we add something new to it, you can always come back and attend the program without any additional, uh, you didn't need to pay whatever you have paid for is it. Because the reason for it is that you trusted on us, you trusted in me, that I would be able to deliver what or uh, what you, what is uh, what is uh, important for you. And when I feel that there is something new to be added, you need to learn something new. I will invite you back. Come, hey, come. So, like all the previous batch students who attended the prompt engineering, which where we did have these. Uh, the JNA, of course, we had the JNA foundation fundamentals, but not to that extent. Yeah, to some extent, we had covered that. They will all be, a, they are all invited to be a part of it. So, it is not a transaction when you enroll for a program with In Glory. It's a relationship. You will be a part of a community. And the community is, uh, we have experts. We will have, uh, we also have uh, we are also having these uh, midweek uh, sessions with Gen AI experts, leaders who have implemented Gen AI and the benefits they are getting, their experiences. So it is not only about what we learn in the course, but what is happening within the industry. You get to know about that also. And it's a continuous process. It's not going to be okay, done and dusted on. 28th September. Rather, it's just the start. So that's all about it. Yeah, the course fee is twelve thousand five hundred, and of course you have uh the, you can have these uh, EMI. You can provide. You can uh, avail for the EMI. It's a minor uh fee for the EMI. Of course, this is provided by the payment processor, not by us. It's the payment processor who provides it. So on the check-in page, you can check that out, and definitely you can uh, register if you find this. That yes, makes sense for me. This is something which I need to do. Then please go ahead and register yourself. And I hope to see you in the sessions. Thank you. I think uh, it was way beyond what I planned to have it for. But uh, yes, it was always. It's always a pleasure to share uh, my thoughts with you and I, I hope you like it. And if you have any other additional questions, please feel free to reach me out. My number, on my best way to reach me out is on my WhatsApp number. It's a 977-6638-7753. I think most of you have it or else it's there on my LinkedIn profile. Send me, a, if you can't reach me on my WhatsApp, send me a LinkedIn message. That's it. And I will answer you. If you have got any other additional question, happy to take it because your questions lead me to find the answers for you. And that's the only way we can find a way forward. Thank you very much.
Thank you for your time and see you then. Bye-bye.